everyone. How's everyone doing? Good. Welcome, Murtiji. It is so wonderful to have you here. You are such an incredible inspiration. For, for all of us here, we see you as a woman's advocate. For me, being born in Canada and being, I'm in real estate, so I'm also in a male-dominated industry. I'm also a minority. All of the work that you've done is such an inspiration. It really, it really pushes us to achieve our dreams. So I want to say thank you for everything that you've done. You're not just an advocate. You're someone that has changed the course of history and you're making it her story. So I love it and I'm so proud to be sitting here. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> we will just have a casual chat. I have some questions. Feel free to take the questions, the answers, anywhere that you would like. We saw this amazing video. We've seen all of the roles that you've played. You're a nanny, you're a mom, you're a philanthropist, you're an advocate, you're an author, you're a leader. What I would love to know is out of all of these roles, do you have a favorite? And which role do you feel you've been able to make the most impact? Oh, thank you for this question. I have a request. You can ask me anything, whatever I know, I will answer with my limited knowledge, but no political questions, please. Perfect. <laughs> That's the first request. Second thing, don't ask me before when I was married, who paid for the hotel bill when I and Mr. Murthy went? Because I always paid because my husband was unemployed. So <laughs> don't ask that one. <laughs> Okay. I love it. <laughs> now, I have played many roles. Every woman plays many roles. It's not only me. In this August gathering, every woman you look at in their life, peep in their life, they have played similar kind of roles. Maybe I got more roles, I think. <laughs> I have enjoyed every role. You know, I have a different philosophy. In real life, many things we dream we ask, but we may or may not get it. So, so many roles, many situations come in such a way that you have to take that role. But if you have an attitude, you know, aptitude for that, or if you really enjoy whatever I get, then you enjoy everything. In my case, I have that. Whatever role I get, I enjoy. So I enjoyed as a teacher, I was very fond of teaching. I enjoyed as a philanthropist helping poorest of the poor. And as an author, I enjoyed writing. So whatever role you give, I will work my level best to make it my level best very good. And I try to, I always enjoy that role. So it's hard for me to tell. However, you ask my students, they say, I was very good teacher. Maybe that could be the one of them. I do not know. But I've enjoyed every role. It's, it's so nice to hear you say that, especially when you received your award. You said, thank you for giving me an award for my vacation. So it's very clear to all of us here that you enjoy every role that you play, which is, which is such a blessing. Okay. It seems when we watch this video, we could see that even at a young age, you had so many dreams. So much, so much passion was within you. And it seems that your parents were also so supportive. When you were small, did you have a dream of being where you are today? And can you tell us about how you went about achieving that dream? Definitely, I did not dream this. I didn't dream. I was brought up in a middle-class family. My father was a doctor. My grandfather was a high school teacher. I come from a teaching family. My mother was a school teacher. So I never imagined uh, life will be like this for me. But at the age of 15 or 16, I decided to follow my passion. By that time, I realized what's my passion is. I always liked applied science, so I decided to do engineering. But even as an engineer, I never thought what I am, what I'll be later. I said, "Look, I enjoy it, and I like engineering. Let me do it." I never went behind marks. I went behind knowledge, and byproduct of that was a rank. So when I was married to Narayan Murthy and we were in Bombay, we started Infosys. I never imagined Infosys will be so big. None of them. I accept life as it comes. And that gives me 
less disappointments probably and that's the way i have lived like oh i should make a lot of money i should become famous none of them were my criteria i liked engineering i will do we murthy wanted to start in forces i will help whatever i get i will do it well and i'm passionate about working hard in whatever field you know in that situation what i get that's so beautiful it's so nice to hear you say that you put your passion not behind the marks but behind the knowledge and it shows you have multiple gold medals and that is and especially in a field where it was it was all men that is so brave and so so courageous can you tell us a little bit about that i'm sure that there's so many women here especially that are in male dominated industries and you from day 1 said i'm going to pursue engineering i'm going to go into applied science and you knew that it was all men did you have any fears and how did you overcome those fears where in college or in work both college work. first college okay. first <laughs> well I, when i joined engineering college boy, boys felt there is an unusual animal in the zoo okay they were not used to having girls in college you know so they felt very funny and they did not know which desk should be given to me the first one or the last one and it was in the year 1968 55 years back in a small town in india in karnataka where it is unheard people felt something is wrong with me maybe psychologically because i am going into a man's domain teachers also felt uncomfortable because there is a girl sitting in the class and they felt it is a man's job man's field you have to do smithy carpentry welding electrical fitting how this girl will do maybe she will be like stay a couple of months and she will leave and go i decided that i have to do this means it is like taking a challenge why one should be scared many people are scared of failures i am not scared of failure i said what will happen i will do engineering okay suppose i get less marks then what happens i said no i will not allow to get less marks i will study well and nobody talked to me nobody talked to me not a single boy talked to me for first six months first semester i said doesn't matter let me understand there are lot many stones in my class and i'm sitting all alone that's the way i looked at it so when you can't talk to a stone so good for stones i don't have to talk and i said i will not depend on anyone to help me out actually very little i knew it is a part of bhagavad gita later part of my life i came to know arjuna was asked arjuna asked krishna who is the best friend and who is the worst enemy krishna says you are the best friend to yourself you are the worst enemy to yourself i learned it when i was 18 if i have to be successful in my career in my education who is my best friend it's me i have to work hard who is my worst enemy it's me get scared extremely sensitive for failure or not getting good marks and leave and go away i said no i will not do that come what may be i will sit and study i will not talk to anyone i will not miss a single class because nobody will give me notes actually my four years or eight semester i did not miss a single class i did not attend any wedding so i said if it is a wedding on working day i will not come but i will not miss my class so i i put my 100% in that atmahi atmano bandhur atmahi ripo atmana that means who is your bandhu you yourself who is your enemy you yourself so that courage of accepting reality accepting failure not getting scared always led my life what i am today than my degree or my money you know if it is something wrong i will stand up and talk what will happen nobody will say, nobody will put me to death no that's okay then ask the same courage i took it in engineering and i did 
the same courage made me to write a letter to jrd tata with the same courage that mr tata you are wrong because half the society in in our country half society consists of women and you say women, in your company says women need not, lady students need not apply that's unfair no country can come up if women are not working and i raise my voice what will happen jrd will not reply but let me tell him no i i am not happy what you think but he was many people are tell me oh we will send you a postcard and you will get me a job i said no <laughs> it is not the postcard i i got the job it is a jrd's vision actually got me a job because jrd said here is a girl 21 23 years old comes from a small town no money no connection in any way and questions a chairman of a company and writing to him you are wrong he said i'm amazed somebody is pointing out that call that girl and tell her and treat her like any other candidate ask her the same questions and in case she, she is capable then we will think it so it is not my greatness writing a postcard but it was his vision his greatness he changed the rule saying that if the girl is competent she should be allowed in a place like that when when i think of jrd he had a blue eyes he had a french mother actually and a parsi father he had a blue eyes always everyone said oh you are so handsome for me those blue eyes always remember reminded me of vastness of a sky and the depth of a sea of compassion of justice it always gave me enormous courage here is the man with that kind of a compassion and a courage and a justice if somebody asks something so he changed my life forever and that made me to ask more and more questions when there's the injustice you know you then bus stop you know there will be a queue as a child i used to do somebody supersedes in india it is lot more there you know like they don't stand queue the bus comes the people person behind you will go first i as a kid of 8 9 years i said no you can't go i'm standing before you you know if you want to go then come early earlier than me my mother is telling me why are you fighting in the bus stop i said no it is not fighting it is a justice that if there is a queue the it should go we should go as per the queue not someone behind me except if there is a pregnant woman or a old lady It's really beautiful that you give all the credit to Mr. Tata because I think for all of us we're hearing your story and yes 100% he had the compassion and the vision to listen to you and to say you know she needs to be a part of this company but it started with your vision and your determination and your your art of persuasion which is amazing and that also comes from from your courage i think a lot of us here we lack that courage we see that there's issues we see that there's problems but we don't have that courage to to stand up as you're saying can you give us some advice as to how we can do that how can we have that courage that same bravery that you have to be able to stand up and to speak our voice and to rise and to make that change i'm ready to lose i'm ready to lose okay so why people don't stand up and ask questions they say in case that person gets upset you with my boss i used to do the same thing i said sir these things i did not agree you should explain to me okay and he said i don't have time i said okay sir whenever you have time i will come please explain because i am ready to lose suppose he may not give me a promotion it doesn't matter it doesn't matter when you put when you always think of you know general good ahead of your personal good then you get the courage if you always think what will i get will i lose my you know somebody will talk about me like this i don't care what people talk people can talk anything i am in philanthropy when i give money and they want people want more money then they say you you are like aishwarya rai which is not true <laughs> okay if i don't give money she is a monster which is also not true i know what i am i don't want other person should justify or tell me what i am because i know inside what i am 
So I don't worry about what people talk. They may talk anything. You should not worry. And that is the courage of asking questions or getting up. Actually, I got admission abroad, you know, in US to do my PhD. So I got a job at Telco and came back home. And my father was my best friend. I'm sure for every daughter, father is the best friend, more than a mother. Mother scolds, father doesn't, as simple as that. My father was my best friend and he said, uh, what did you do? Why did you go to Pune? I told him, I went there. I wrote a letter to JRD. They called me for an interview. I did the interview and I got the job. He said, are you going? I said, no, I'm not going. I said, why are you not going? I said, no, I want to do my PhD in US and I want to go. He said, better I gave you good education. That's what I thought. Because you have to walk the talk. When you open the Pandora box saying that, why women are not equal to men, you know? And when they have given you an opportunity, if you go, that means you are running away from reality. You are not what you have talked, you are not walking it. And that is not a good education. He said, uh, and he told me, you will go abroad. You may or may not come back. You learn a lot of money probably. But what about what you talked? Otherwise you could have kept quiet, no? They need not have taken ladies. So, always in life, my father woke me up and said, walk the talk. And that is called courage. What you talk, you should mean it. You should always think of public good or in, in general, the good to the society. And then you should work in the direction. Today I'm very happy in my college, in instrumentation, there are 60% girls, 40% boys. So I tell them, girls look after boys, they are in minority. <laughs> and when I was alone, I know what it is to be alone. Don't make boys like that, you know, in small group, okay? Be, come, be nice to them. What I'm telling you is, when you want to change something, it takes time, it takes courage, it, it takes a lot of hard work. Then only it is possible. Otherwise, you know, I always tell life would be like this in India. You take a job, don't oppose anybody, just go to office, come back, buy a 30 by 40 site. India, that's a big site, huh? okay? Unlike Canada, we can't buy big houses because we don't have that kind of a land. Color it yellow color. Husband and wife go to Singapore, Malaysia, America and Canada, see Niagara Falls, World Trade, World, no, World Trade Center is not there. Okay, Statue of Liberty, come back. Lead your life and die one day. And most people do that. That is not life. It is not life. Life means have courage, do good things. You may, you may make some mistakes, but don't make the same mistakes again. Learn from every mistake. Lead a life worth living, not just you got, you know, you stayed, got married, had children and died. Apart from that, there is another life is there. And that life I always appreciate. It is so, so beautiful and you're giving us all so many lessons. I feel like you all should be taking notes. I'm definitely taking notes mentally of everything that you're speaking of. And you mentioned the Gita earlier. And even when you're saying now, it's written in the Gita, Krishna tells Arjun that you shouldn't be working for the fruits of your labor. That's not what belongs to you. You should just be working to do the work and, and to serve and to serve humanity. And serving humanity and philanthropy is something that is so important to you. And you have changed so much of the landscape in India because of your philanthropy. All of us here would love to know what got you started in philanthropy. What was it from, you've done so many things in engineering, applied science. Was there a shift in your mindset? What was it that led you to philanthropy? Be. Well, there, I'm a storyteller, so I have to tell two stories. One is uh, my grandparents, you know, they were, my grandfather was a simple man. He never went out of Karnataka, never went to even to Delhi. Um, but he was a Sanskrit scholar. In our village, you know, olden days, people used to come, you know, asking some help. And we, we had 150 acres of land. We used to grow rice. 
There is the first quality rice, there is the second quality rice. Red rice and green. Today, red rice has become way more expensive than the white rice. In olden days, it was second quality, we used to call. Anyway, whenever they will come and ask help in our village, grandfather would tell me, go to the store, if there is a store room, go and get uh, from granary a good rice, one major, and give it to that person. He may be a beggar, he may be a sannyasi, he may be a sadhu, he may be a poor man, we don't know. He will never ask. My grandfather will never ever ask. Give him one measure. And in the night, my grandmother used to cook the second quality rice for us. And I asked that question. When someone comes for help, you always give good rice. Whenever we want to eat in the night, you always make red rice. Why? My grandfather told Upanishad quoted and said, you know, why we should give away the best one, etc. My grandmother never went to school. She told me in a simple way. Suppose God comes to our house. What do you give? I said, I'll give the good quality. You know, because he should give me good marks. Okay. <laughs> the kid's seven, eight years old. She said, not that better. If someone comes to our doorstep for help, we should give the best because that person has come in the form of a God. She has never went to school. That was her philosophy. Not the leftover rice or not, not the ghee which is smelling. Don't give that. Otherwise, don't give. But grandfather quoted, you know, Upanishad and told, Dhanam Priya Vaksaitum Shraddha Hidanam, etc. How much time we have left? Because I go on, go on talking. I'm not sure. How much time do we have left? Please tell me, then I will wind up. Ten? You know. We're good. Yeah. This is the background I had. When I was 45 years old, my daughter Akshata was 15 years old. And she, on her own, used to go to a blind school and read for a person by the name Anand Sharma. He was blind and he was poor. So she used to go and read for him. She used to also she was a scriber to him. So she looked after basically a poor blind boy. One day she came and told me, Amma, Anand Sharma got seat in St. Stephen's College and he doesn't have money and why can't you sponsor him? I was head of the Department of Computer Science, extremely busy in setting the question paper, answer paper, etc. And I was not getting question paper, so I told Akshata, why can't you sponsor him? She said, Amma, you, have, you never give me money in my hand. I never give pocket money to my children. I said, you make a list, I will buy. Make a list, I will come with you, you buy. Okay, I never gave. I said, why do you require? So Akshata said, I don't have even 10 rupees in my hand. And today, her wealth is written in every paper, which is true or may not be true, but everyone writes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so she said, papers write wealth, and I don't have even 10 rupees in my hand. How can I sponsor? And then said, I said, okay, you save some money from your birthday and sponsor. Because my mind was not in that while, what she was talking. She said, I, for birthday, you call all our friends home, make idli and sambar and and fruity, that is the drink in India. Where is a birthday celebration? There is no celebration, there is no money involved in that. Then she said, Amma, please think it over. You are 45 years old. Because with my daughter and my son, I always keep a good relation like friends. You know, not that they should be scared of me and I should be scared of them. No. We will talk to each other like two friends. She said, Amma, you are 45 years old. What do you expect in life? What is your remaining life you want to spend? You are well-educated. You have a fair amount of money. Do you want to lead a life of glamour? Do you want to lead a life of traveling every country and staying in a five-star hotel? Do you want to do that? What is your aim in life at 45? She asked me. I didn't answer. And she was very... And she told me, if you cannot do philanthropy, Amma, you don't have a right to tell anyone to do philanthropy. And she went away. I, I was setting the paper. I went to the central hall examination table because many examiners were there. And by the time you reached, you know, in India it happened, sometimes it happens, that there was no current and it was postponed. Computer were not working. I sat there, you know, below the ceiling fan of the central college. What did my daughter say? Let me think it over coolly. 
First 22, 24 years, I worked very hard for my degree because I wanted to beat boys in their own game. Okay? Today, I don't look like that. I don't think that way. But that time, I said, everybody looks down upon a girl. She can't do engineering. Then let me beat the boys in their own engineering and show knowledge does not, knowledge does not have any bias, gender bias. It is only the mind has. Knowledge is free. It is, the, it is the asset of those people who work for it. And I wanted to prove it. Next 20 years, I worked for Infosys without looking at left or right. For every role I did, receptionist, driver. My husband does no driving. I used to drive. Drive mad also. Okay? <laughs> every work at Infosys. Accountant, programmer, you name a thing. Somebody is not there. Murthy will call me, so I come and do the programming, I will do. Now, Infosys has grown. It doesn't require me because it has its own staff, etc. I'm 45 years, I'm head of the Department of Computer Science. What is my aim in life? Suppose God gives me good health. And next 20, 30 years, I do not know how long I live. What is my aim? I said, yes, what Akshata told is true. I was sleeping, my daughter woke me up. She gave me the direction, you have to do philanthropy, and I had that bent of mind. Then I went back and resigned as head of the department. Our, I used to work for a Christ University in Bangalore. Our reverend fathers were my colleagues. They said, ma'am, you don't uh, resign. You are a very popular teacher. You come only twice a week or thrice a week. And I went to Infosys. I said, I'm starting foundation. Thus, I started foundation. Probably it is in our family, it's a hereditary, I suppose. My grandmother did not know how to read and write. I taught her how to read and write at the age of 62. And I wrote about it, how I taught my grandmother to read and write. In my family, it's a tradition, I suppose, elders learn by youngsters. So, Akshata taught me and gave me the knowledge, showed me the way to start philanthropy. So when I got an award from Economic Times somewhere, I called Akshata, you are my teacher. You woke me up, I was sleeping. Please come and grace the occasion. <laughs> you don't have much time, you got the last I question. I think we have a few minutes, a few minutes left, yes? Yeah. So I guess this will be the last question then. One of your personal mantras, you always talk about leading a simple life. And you tell your children this as well, that they should lead a simple life. I would love for you to teach all of us here today, what does that mean? And how can we pursue the same mantra? What is simple life means? What I like, I do that. Um, I have a very funny principle. The more you accumulate, more responsibility will be there. Suppose I have a lot of, let's assume, I have very expensive ornaments. Then I should worry when I, tra I travel about 200 days plus days, okay? I travel a lot. You have to keep in a locker, lock the locker, keep the key somewhere else. And when you are abroad, when you are traveling, you will be worried somebody got the key, opened it, that's one. Second thing, to be happy in life, you don't require too much. Good, good sleep, good food, good food means not with ghee and butter. Okay, good healthy food, healthy habits. And without any much headache, you should live. Like, you know, I don't have any wish list or your uh, bucket list. I don't have any of these wish bucket or bucket list, whatever you call. All are empty. All are empty. The moment in life you go on expecting higher and accumulating more and more and more, it will affect your life. I was in Ceylon. I will take another two more minutes, I will tell you. I was in Ceylon. Then, you know, that time the Prime Minister who was there, I won't remember his name. He told me, go and visit uh, uh, Buddhist, uh, Buddhist temple, you know, Buddha's temple. I went there, Vihara. And that uh, Swami studied in Bangalore, so he knew Canada. I was talking to him. I felt very sorry for that monk. He had a golden Buddha of this type. He had a silver Buddha of this size and uh, jade Buddha of this size and many small diamond etc. were there. 
I said, Swamiji, what do you do with this? I asked, address the monk Swami only. He said, every night I put them into oh, uh, 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 a place and put the alarm on and double lock it and keep eight uh, guards and I go home. I said, my God, Buddha himself left the kingdom, <laughs> left his wife, everything. He has become a monk. And this Swamiji has to worry about silver Buddha, jade Buddha, diamond Buddha. I thought, why I have? I told Swamiji, instead, you should have a clay Buddha like Ganesha kind. Nobody will take. Or store Buddha, nobody will take. Best is have Buddha in your mind and in your heart and live like Buddha. That is the, <laughs> that is the living Buddha. So, if a thief comes to my house, what he can steal? I think that way. Books, nobody will touch books nowadays. <laughs> okay? Saris, hardly women, next generation they wear. Maybe I'll be the, la like a dinosaur, so I'll be the last generation to wear saris and all. What he can take out of my house? Bartan, they are, it's better not to take it because it makes more noise and cheaper, you can get it anywhere. If you like, lead a simple life, your overheads are minimum. When your overheads are minimum, you get a good sleep. You are not worried where I left the keys. Where I left the keys. Leave the key anywhere. Leave the key anywhere. Whatever you have, get that happiness in your heart. Happiness, if you are happy in the heart, it radiates on your face. It gives you enormous courage in life. You, can, you cannot buy confidence and courage with Infosys talk. You cannot buy with any gold or jade. It should be born within you. And you should enjoy every minute of your life. It may be a slow rain, fast rain, you know, simple rain, flower blooming, beautiful moonlight, beautiful sun rays, and beautiful different colors which I saw today in your autumn leaves or fall leaves. Such a beautiful color. Ekauna chitrakara hai, ekauna chitrakara. Thank you very much for patient hearing. Being a teacher, I know how to manage the crowd. <laughs> and particularly, my boys in my college were unruly, so I could control them very well. <laughs> and you people are not unruly, so it's easy to control. So, thanks a lot for giving me this award, making me part of Canada and India. Getting this award means honoring philanthropy. Philanthropy is not a job like people think. You give away, that is money, that is philanthropy. It is a science and an art, a science to under, psychology to understand what the person wants, what is the exit policy, what is the sustainability, and in the long range it is useful or not. It is also an art because our ancestors have told when you give away, give away with happiness, give away with the good words, give away with ashirvad, dhanam priya vaksahitam shraddhahi dhanam Ashraddhai Nadanam, which is a part of Upanishad. So, you have, that I learned, and now I feel youngsters can take philon, you know, social work and philanthropy as, as a, a career, and they can also get an award like me. Dhanyavad. Jai Hind. <laughs>